Not before I, before I start. None of that was on camera. None of that was on camera. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous, ain't it? I'm going to have to do better than this. Uh, Chuck Colson passed away. I guess y'all remember him uh, with the Nixon administration. You know, he went to jail for seven, eight months and... Uh, Man, he had a tremendous prison ministry for years. I think he's 80 years old. Uh, had some heart problems and a problem with the brain somehow or another and had surgery. And he went on to be with the Lord, but we'll, we'll miss him. We want to pray for those that have gone to the prison tonight in Columbia. Uh, we all love the inmates. We love the prisoners, don't we? If it wasn't for the grace of God... I would be in there myself if I, Lord, we ain't going into that. <laughs> we'll pray. We'll pray. We'll pray for the uh, prison service tonight and pray for this service. Awesome service this morning. I enjoyed it so much. It's such an honor when the Holy Spirit comes in a service and just takes over. I understand I had a great time soaking last night in the Lord's presence. And uh, so we just want to go to the Lord tonight in prayer and pray for this prison service. Father, we love you. We praise you. We count it an honor, Lord, together in your name. We count it an honor, Lord, to go into the prisons, the mission field. Lord, uh, here at home and overseas, we just ask that you be with Ricky and the group tonight. <clears throat> God, that you'll just use them, that you'll touch uh, people's lives tonight that you'll encourage people Lord you'll strengthen people you'll deliver people and Lord just be with the Colson family we pray God as they are at this loss of this husband Lord and just touch us tonight I pray God quicken us in your spirit and Lord we'll give you the praise and the glory for everything in Jesus name is anybody here tonight that's familiar with uh uh, killing bugs. Let me put that way. I had the word a while ago. Exterminating insects. We, we need somebody to spray the building. We got the spray. If uh, somebody's familiar with that and you want to do it, just see me after the service. I, I looked up the, uh, uh, the, the stuff that we use to eliminate uh, the insects, but I've noticed that a few bugs are kind of crawling back into the building now so i want to see if we can wipe them out before they get started amen god bless you tonight this announcement okay see there i tell you it takes somebody to keep me straight okay we got a sign up sheet in the front for you uh need men and women to volunteer to build a ramp for bill tucker actually uh, bill lives uh in Cherokee, but he has a he has a home in uh, Marietta, and so he needs a ramp. and And if it wasn't for his health, he would be able to build it himself. But he's got uh, problems with his feet. He's got gout, and I don't know what all. You know, it's amazing. The older you get, the, you, the more you realize how important your feet and your legs are. Uh, very important. So he needs some volunteers to build that ramp. Uh, uh, Saturday meet at Jim's restaurant at 8 a.m. for breakfast April the 28th it's for men and women that want to help and so that's it how many know how many don't know where Jim's restaurant is it's in the mall over there on Anderson Road uh, but you know where, Jim, where uh, Wendy's is on White Horse Road there that's Anderson Road that comes across right before you get to Wendy's. Uh, that big intersection there, that's 81. That's Anderson Road. Jim's is in that uh, shopping center down behind Wendy's there. Uh, are you familiar with that shopping center? Big Lots is in there. 
the dollar stores in there. I know about all these things because my wife likes big lots. She don't care if it's little lots. <laughs> so big lots and all that. If you have if you had any problem, you know, just call me. I'll tell you how to get there. Uh, but it's behind Wendy's there. At 8 a.m. for breakfast, and let me tell you something. They got some biscuits. Oh, boy. My grandma used to make biscuits. I think they, you know, I don't want her to hear me, but, <laughs> you know, I think they make better biscuits than my grandma. And they got country ham and all that stuff. So you'd have a good breakfast. Meet at Jim's restaurant at 8 a.m. for breakfast. And it's real reasonable there. If you would like to help with those, uh, God bless you. And Bill Tucker is a gentleman that was here this morning, of course, from Cherokee. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Do you still have a voice after all that singing this morning? I believe so. Amen. Give God all the glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Yes, he Amen. is. Thank you, Jesus. If we'll give him the glory. How many remember and can't forget what God's done for you? 
Amen. Hallelujah. dumplings today my, made my mouth, uh, my throat dry. <laughs> now, I, you know, when um, I learned how to cook chicken and dumplings um, from, from my mother-in-law, and I'm telling you, she'll make a big old pot like this, and that's the only way I know how to make it. It's enough to feed an army, you know. Yeah, so we're going to have leftovers a lot this week, I think. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, thank God. <laughs> For dumplings. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, today we drank from the river of life this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a river. <laughs> there is a river whose streams make glad the city of us.
fountain full of grace. <clears throat> Hallelujah. This morning, we sang a song called Who Can Satisfy? How many were touched by that song this morning? I know I was. Hallelujah. We're going to do it again tonight. I believe this is for someone, not only in this congregation, but out there in the, in the internet, all the audience that's listening. I want you to know that Jesus is the only one who can satisfy your soul. Mm -hmm. You sure can. Yeah. Um, you know, this morning I just had an experience with God uh, with this song. And, you know, you can do this with any any song there is. Just close your eyes and imagine because it's this real that the kingdom is within you. The king is here. He has sent the Holy Ghost. He is present with you right now. And you can praise him. It is praising him in spirit and in truth. And literally, you know, sometimes we just sing songs. But if you get into the song and you sing that song to the Lord, I mean, yeah. you begin to praise him out of your heart, thinking, you know, when it says that there comes, there'll be a day when they worship him in spirit and in truth, a lot of times we think that word spirit means shouting and Holy Ghost, but that word spirit is lowercase. Anytime it's talking about the Holy Ghost, it is capitalized. Yes. The reason why it's lowercase is because spirit means awareness. It means when you're singing, you're praising him. You are doing it in spirit. You have a constant, real awareness of what you are saying and who you are saying it to. Amen. That's pretty deep for Sunday night, but I want you just to think on that. You praise him in spirit. Have an awareness for God. God, I'm singing this to you, and I mean every word that I'm saying. And you meditate on those words while you're saying it. I'm telling you, you'll feel God, and you'll feel the Holy Ghost. You will feel him. I, he, you, he, it, there's a built-in law that any time you begin to praise God, He comes and inhabits the praise. Amen. He has to. Hallelujah. Yes. He can't say that I'm not. <laughs> Do y'all realize how powerful that is? Sometimes we think that praising God is, well, let me see if God wants to come around me today. But His Word, He, he puts His Word above His name. He will never violate His own Word. He'll never lie. So when He says that I inhabit the praise of my people, He has to come. Amen. Amen. Now, who wants to feel that experience with God? Begin to praise him with a constant awareness, a real awareness that I am praising you, King, and you have to come and inhabit my praise. Mm, that was good. Hallelujah. Woo, praise the Lord. You know, we should want to praise him because he's our Father God. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. He's Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Hallelujah. And Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
hallelujah. There is a fountain who is the king, victorious warrior and lord of everything. My rock, my shelter, my very own, blessed redeemer who reigns upon the Praise the Lord. It's just what Nathan said. We, we worship through a born-again spirit. They worship different in the Old Testament. They had to bring an animal, and they had to burn offering, and, and they worshiped through the blood of animals, through doves and through goats they worshiped. But we worship through a born-again spirit. We're, as Jeanette taught this morning, we're in the dispensation of grace. Dispensation. God deals with us, dealt with humanity at certain times in different ways. First, what was Innocence. How many know it was innocent before the fall? Dispensation of innocence. You say, how long did that last? I don't know. Conscience. Human government. Promise. Abraham. Moses, the law. We're in that period of grace right now. The kingdom of God dwells in us. But one day he'll set up a literal kingdom. It'll be a kingdom dispensation. Hallelujah. He'll literally rule and reign from Jerusalem. That's awesome, isn't it? Right now he's ruling in here. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. I tell you that it doesn't matter how big, the, how great the battle gets. It's still wonderful living for the Lord. Can't beat it. There ain't nobody got. Ain't nobody got nothing to even touch it. God is so good. So wonderful. One day the Jewish people. <clears throat> The nation of Israel realized there is a fountain. So as Zechariah said, hallelujah, God's so good. Can we have some ushers? <laughs> I don't know, I just feel the joy of the Lord. I, I felt it since Wednesday night. You know, Tony didn't get to come Wednesday night. He watched us on stream. I wouldn't doubt he's probably watching tonight. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that we can stream this out and then put it on videos? It's wonderful. We're so happy that people are watching. Hope that they're getting blessed and getting taught. Put your hand on your heart and say, I'm in the dispensation of grace right now. <laughs> saved by grace. Saved by grace. I'm living by grace. That same power that saves me gives me the grace to live for the Lord. Sin no longer has the power over me. I got the power over sin. I, said, I got tickled watching Creflo this morning. He said, Nobody plans a wreck, a car wreck. It just happens. But nobody plans one. If, this, if somebody has a wreck every day, they don't need to be on the highway, he said. We don't plan to sin, do we? I don't know about y'all, but I don't want nobody to accuse me of, of giving somebody the legal right to sin. 
but sometime I have a car wreck. I don't mean to. Anybody know what I'm talking about? No, y'all know what I'm talking about. But if I do, I got an advocate with a father. I don't willfully sin. I got an advocate with a father. If I confess it to him, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Ain't that wonderful? Glory to God. Now, if I miss the mark, nobody has to come and tell me, Brother Porter, you missed the mark. Holy Ghost is already there telling me, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Amen. Ain't God wonderful? My English ain't good, but it, God's good. Amen. Robert, would you pray, sir? Yes, Lord. Thank you for that fountain. Thank you for being that fountain. Thank you for being in my life. Hallelujah. I hope you touch each and everybody here tonight. Yes, Lord. Lord, bless these ties and offerings. Thank you, Jesus. Bless those that can and those that can't give, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tomorrow night I'm supposed to be on Nightline. If you get a chance to watch it, be co hosting.
Amen. I was with the Lord, and there was nothing between me and my Savior. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We worship through a lamb now. Who is that lamb? He's truth. Amen. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, girl. I got it. Amen. New Orleans girl. Praise the Lord. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. So you're worshiping, worshiping through a lamb, but <laughs> it's Jesus. You know, if you really get saved, you can't enjoy sin no more. How many know that? You can't enjoy it anymore. You, you don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it. How many know what I'm talking about? You don't want it anymore. <laughs> Glory to God. We the leopard that, cli- that cried clean, clean, clean. Paula told me this morning after the service that she had a grandma that loved her so much that she prayed till she got back with God. Isn't that wonderful? How many because of somebody's love they prayed for you and you came to the Lord or came back to the Lord? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about love, aren't we? I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 12. Is anybody cold in here? You are. Anybody hot? Okay, got two hot, one cold. Anybody lukewarm? (laughs) Cut one of those units off. You will leave the other on, if you will. If you don't mind, just all you got to do is just flip it up. 1 Corinthians 12. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13. That's the meat between the sandwich. Now, listen, I I know people that don't even believe in the gifts that we believe in. And they could still use some love. Everybody needs love. Regardless of where you believe in the power and the gifts to operate. But we're talking about love again tonight. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Just a noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Man, that's some power, ain't it? That's some revelation. And though I have all faith (laughs) so that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Now, the Lord told us to speak to mountains, but if we had that kind of faith and we have not love, it says I'm nothing. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity or love, it doesn't profit me anything, doesn't benefit me anything. If you will turn to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. How many know the devil will try to steal your love? He will try to affect our attitude and our emotions. Different ways. He he's been doing this so long. He knows what works on one and what works on another. He doesn't use the same thing on everybody. He he knows how we respond. We've watched him. He's watched us rather. He knows how we respond. We have to make an effort to keep love working in us. It's not just automatic. You say, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, but the enemy comes to steal the fruit off of your tree. 
Does he not? If you'll notice, that is one fruit. It's all off of one tree. It's one fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith or faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. You say, but that's the fruit of the Spirit. How about the dunamis, the power of the Holy Ghost? 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. What come after that? And of love. That word power, there's dunamis, the dynamite, the Pentecostal power. He's given us power. But with that power, he's given us what? Love. And a what? A sound mind. Now, why would those be connected? Because if you don't love, the tormentors will get on you. Believe me. If you don't know what the tormentors are, (laughs) you probably had them, you just didn't identify them. You don't know what they were. The tormentors is where God has to pull back and the enemy has a shot at our emotions, our mind. And he torments us. A lot of people are in the insane asylum because they won't forgive. I'm not saying everybody. Prescriptions will not dull that. It won't take it away. A lot of people are in insane asylum. I'm not saying everybody. Because of bitterness and unforgiveness, the tormentors have taken over. They try to sedate them. You cannot deal with demons with with words or medication. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody's problem, but a lot of people. I don't like the tormentors. I've had them in my life before. I don't like them. I'm gonna, can't go there. Matthew 5, verse 43. This is Jesus talking. It's about love. You have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Do you know that Jesus' teachings were stricter than parts of the law? Really? Under the law, you had to kill somebody to be guilty. Under grace, (laughs) you can want to kill somebody in your heart and you're guilty of murder. Now, that don't mean go, go out and do it. It don't mean go out and do it because you thought it and you might, you say, well, I'm guilty. I might as well do it. No, 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 no. You, you'll destroy somebody's life. You'll, you'll mess up a family. You'll wind up in jail. You don't want to do that. In the Old Testament, you had to commit fornication and adultery. In the New Testament, You can dwell on it and dwell on it. Now, I'm not talking about temptation. Don't let me have to preach this. How many know temptation is not a sin? Oh, Lord. (laughs) To be tempted to do something is not a sin. It's when you let it conceive in your heart, when you dwell on it and think on it, and it becomes reality that it's a sin. I have lusted in Burger King before. Somebody got a better looking hamburger than I did and it was bigger. And I sat there and watched them eat it and I coveted it. I've seen Jeanette every time she orders at a restaurant. I don't know what it is. They always give her a bigger piece of chicken than me. And I covet that piece of chicken. I lust after that piece of chicken. I have to repent. Temptation is not sin. It's when you yield to it, it becomes sin. That's why you shouldn't dwell on it. 
Jesus was tempted like we are, yet without what? Without sin. So Jesus' teaching is really stricter than the law. Now, why would he do that? Because Moses didn't have the Holy Ghost. He had it upon him. But he did not have that grace in him because he was under the law. You understand? The Spirit hadn't come that he could be born again. We've got the power over the devil today because we're born again. Are you with me? Have I lost half of you? We've got more power than Moses had. Come on now. We got more power than John the Baptist had. And he was named the greatest prophet. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And he's bringing life to us. Hallelujah. So he's given us victory. This is good. It's good. So don't, don't, don't say I can't do something Jesus said do. You can. Come on. This is verse 44. But I say in you, love your enemies. <laughs> love your enemies. You got to love your enemies too. This is good preaching already. We're not allowed to stay in unforgiveness. You say, what if somebody was to, now this is the extreme, do something to one of my children? Am I supposed to forgive them? You will have to work through a place of forgiveness. But because the law teaches about human government, have them locked up, prosecute them, come on now, testify against them, make sure they don't get out and harm somebody else's child. But for your good, you have to work, walk through and work through to where you can forgive somebody. Now, don't tell me you can't. I've had to do it. Not over a child. But you've got to do it. If you don't do it, you will be tormented. God will give you a grace period to be, be, to be a time when you have to forgive somebody. How, you know, you think about somebody uh, that loses a child through a drunken driver. That's awful. Man, that's hard to deal with. That person should be prosecuted and put away. That's human government. I believe in capital punishment. You say, I don't. Well, you got the right not to, but I believe in it. If, if somebody is... If they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not circumstantial evidence, that they kill somebody, they should be killed. Give them a chance to get saved because I've been on, I've been, I've felt dealt with death row inmates. You, 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 you give them a chance to be saved, but, but the law has to take its course. This, the meek is going to inherit the earth. The meek is not somebody that allow somebody to do something to the child like that and get away with it. Meekness is complete submission to God, obedient to God, humble before God. That's what meekness is. But we've got to love those people that are our enemies now, I don't know about you. I, I, I didn't really have a lot of faith doing it, but I prayed for Osama bin Laden. I prayed for him to be saved. He never got saved, right? But I had to pray for him. Do you know he destroyed a lot of our people? But you can get around people that are so angry over something. They're so angry, they're so bitter that, that you can feel the bitterness and the anger and it's like a heaviness around them. And, and you, you, you don't enjoy being around them. Why? 
because they're not loving and they're not forgiving. Now, you may have been brought up hard. You may have been brought up mean. You may, you, you, but that's no excuse when you become a Christian. God teaches us to love. Now, I don't know about y'all, but there's some people, uh, even in my family, I guess, and I hope none of them are watching that, that's in this way, but there's some of my family, I don't go around because they don't want me to come around. They don't come around me, I don't go around them. Are you angry at them? I love them, man. If they call me, I'd go to them. Come on. But I got to love them. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do you know people will try to speak curses over you? This don't mean they curse you out. That, this means that people speak words of defeat over you, words of hurt, words of harm. They speak it over you. They speak it over you. you, you don't, we don't have to operate where they do. Let them do it. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you. You say, well, you curse me, I'm going to curse you worse. May the, may the fleas of a thousand camels climb under your armpit. <laughs> may maggots go up your nose. <laughs> say, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to bless those. Come on now. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm telling you, if you're still carrying a feud, a grudge that you've been carrying five or ten years, it will destroy you. It will kill you. You have to learn to bless your enemies and go on. Let them stay awake all night worrying about you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully or spitefully use you and persecute you. Boy, that's a test there, ain't it? Come on now. Is that a test? Yes, it is. But can we do it? Yeah. <laughs> can we do it? Yes, we can. I had somebody, you know, my daughter's been divorced. Some people just want people that's never had any problems around them. They're so self-righteous. They don't want broken people around them, people that's had problems in their life. But I'm going to tell you, God loves broken people. And it wasn't my daughter's choice, but her husband put her out after a year. He, he was uh, uh, working in uh, dentistry in the uh, Navy. <clears throat> And they were at Fort Jack, uh, Fort uh, at uh, Buford, at Paris Island. I don't know what the Navy was doing there with the Marines, but they were there. That's the hardest thing I ever had to deal with in my life. Well, one of the hardest, not the hardest, but one of the hardest I had to, the things I had to deal with in my life was forgiving this guy because he continually hurt her. He put her out for a year, then he took her back, kept her uh, nine months, put her out, put her out again. I fasted and prayed for that guy. I fasted and prayed. Jeanette fasted and prayed for his salvation because he, he was religious when he got married, claimed he was saved. <laughs> People put on their best side. I got to the place where I prayed, God, kill him. I was miserable. You understand what I'm saying? How many of y'all human beings, you got... <laughs> I mean, I did, I prayed. And then I found out what marveled me because this little Baptist girl over here that's always been so sweet and nice and cries so easy and don't want to offend anybody, she was praying the same thing. God, take him out of the way. I don't know where she's looking, somebody in New Orleans, the mafia to take him out or what. But I mean, we're, we, we hadn't been filled with the Spirit too long and, and, and we had to work through that thing. 
Y'all ever had to work through something? Because the devil will really get at you when he hurts somebody you love. He, he touches somebody you love. That's the hardest thing to deal with. But you can work through it, can't you? You can. It's not impossible. Don't let that root of bitterness grow because it will affect a lot of other people. And it will destroy you. Who said what? Say it a little louder right here. Deal your salvation. Steal it. Oh, they'll steal it. Yeah. 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 They'll steal it. S-T-E-A-L. He will steal your peace. The enemy will steal your peace. He'll steal everything. There are things that I have no control over. I cannot, I have no control over them. Why let anger take over me and make me bitter? It's not profitable. I work through it. I, I, I don't really have any animosity for that young man now. God gave my daughter a good marriage. My daughter's always telling me how good her husband is to her. But, you know, I guess what I was trying to say was a lady at our church, we, we went to a semi God church, wasn't, wasn't pastor in there. A young lady at our church told us, well, said your daughter's life is ruined. She tried to speak a curse. I mean, she's a good, a good lady. You understand what I'm saying? But she was saying something dumb. We didn't need to hear that. <laughs> It really, I had to forgive her. <laughs> I mean, you know, when he comes in, he'll come in sometimes, boom, like that. Because my daughter's life was not ruined. And we said, this curse, it's not going, it ain't no, no curse going to fall on her. People will try to speak words of curse. They'll try to speak a curse over you. The way to react when they do is to bless them. Because no curse is going to come nigh your house as long as you're doing right and obeying God and forgiving and loving. Now, when it's something extreme about what I was talking about a while ago, God is patient with you, especially if you're young in the Lord. He's patient with you. Even if you're older in the Lord, he's patient with you. But there comes a time when you have to deal with the anger and the unforgiveness. Come on now, this is good preaching. God will bring you to a time where you have to deal with it because he won't the devil wants to hurt your walk with God there's a lot of people and you probably know some of them I don't know that you do but you probably know somebody they, they seem like their life just fell apart and it was destroyed because they did not handle something right they didn't handle it biblically you got to handle it biblically and I know there's some hard cases. But I'm going to read that verse 44 again. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Now let me tell you this. I, 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 I just want to hit you with this. If, if, you, if you've got a business and you've got a treasurer that's stealing from you and you catch him, it don't mean you don't love him, you don't forgive him, but you ain't going to keep him as a treasure, right? Because love don't mean you say, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'll count the money every night. <laughs> no, no. You understand what I'm saying? You're still going to love him, but you got to deal with him. Are you with me? Don't mean you don't forgive him. That you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to, to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. A lot of people get caught up in this and they say, I don't understand why God's blessing this person over here. I'm doing right and they're not doing right and it seems like they're blessed greater than I am. I tell you, it ain't over till it's over, honey. Don't worry about them. 
Just keep yourself walking that straight line, that narrow road. I like to sleep good at night. I don't know about y'all, but every time I've ever gotten strife and, and unforgiveness and anger, I don't sleep good. Do y'all? Fess up, do you? No. <laughs> the quicker you can forgive, the better it is. Now, you may have to deal with something, but forgive. Forgive. This is good teaching. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Now, how many know there's a reward to love those that don't love you? God will reward you. God will lift you up in front of them. Some people, if you stay where you are when they meet you, they'll love you. But when you, God begins to bless you, they'll hate you. That went by your head. Some people, when you meet them, if you stay where you are when you met them, they'll love you. But if God begins to fulfill his call on your life and lift you up and bless you, they won't like you. Are you with me? You've got to expect that. Love them anyway. Some people rejoice over you getting a new car. Some people will get mad at you. That's just a bad example, but <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Promotion will bring more enemies than staying where you are. But you've got to learn how to deal with people. Somebody say wisdom. Obey God. Keep your focus on the Lord. This is so true. What you put your focus on is the direction you're going. Because in NASCAR, they tell the race car drivers, don't look at the wall. How many know there's a wall? And if you run 180 miles an hour, you run into that wall, it's going to be a big wreck. <laughs> so they tell you, how many know you'd have a tendency to look at the wall to see how close you are? They say don't look at the wall because what you focus on is the direction you're going. So if you focus on these people that have upset you, cursed you, spoken bad about you, if you put your focus on them, you're going to run into the wall. You're going to run off the track that God has for you and you're going to wreck and Kenny used to work for a NASCAR driver. And I'm sure if Dunn Sprouse is here, he'd tell you the same thing. The devil wants to get our focus on something that is attacking us. Don't do it. This is good preaching. Walk in forgiveness and love. For if you love them which love you, and you'll be tried on this. And let me tell you this, if the devil can't get you directly, if he can't get you off focus directly, he will come against you another way. He'll use family. He'll use somebody you love. He'll attack somebody you love. He'll do something. He wants to get your focus off because I want to see where I'm going, not where I've been. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute, <laughs> if, you, if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans. The sinners do that. Now here's the good one right here. Here's what denominations have taken and worked their scripture and, and got into error. Verse 48, be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I have spiritual perfection. Look at somebody and say, I got spiritual perfection. 
the spiritual perfections inside of me. Right? What is that spiritual perfection? Who is it? It's Jesus. Who is inside of me? Perfect love is inside of me. The, 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 somebody help me. There's a word slipped my mind. (laughs) The subject of these scriptures is love. It's love. It's forgiving. It's walking in love. So when it says, be like Jesus, be ye perfect as your father is perfect. It's talking about perfect love. Walk in that perfect agape love that is inside of you. Perfect love cast out fear of judgment. I'm not fearing the great white throne judgment. Because as long as I serve Jesus and love him, I'm not going there. I'm not going to face the great white throne judgment. So that love of God that's in my heart cast out all fear of going before the, that judgment seat. I will go before the judgment seat of Christ. Raise your hand and say, glory to God. That's true. I am too. <laughs> Woo. That's for my works. Jesus will... Either my works is either wood, hay, and stubble is something I've come up with, or if it comes through refined as gold, it's something that God gave me a purpose, and I walk that purpose out. And my works will please him because it was done because he led me to do those things, and he anointed me to do those things, and those works will last. Come on now. So this word perfect means finished, mature. Hallelujah. So what the Lord is saying here is that we're to walk in the same love that Jesus walked in. He's perfect. He's perfect love. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. Don't nobody lie in here tonight now. You, you, you're not a sinner because you don't enjoy sin no more. You, you don't want to, you don't want to sin. You don't deliberately sin. You don't, you don't enjoy sin. You don't want to sin. But sometimes you have a car wreck like Creflo's talking about. And you miss it. How many know what I'm talking about? You miss it. So God is not telling us to be perfect because he knows we can't. Is anybody here that can raise their hand and say, I'm perfect? <laughs> no, you ain't. You're a liar. <laughs> You've been deceived. Because I'll talk to your wife or your husband or your aunt or uncle. We'll find out where you are or not. They'll tell on you. But all God is saying is walk in that kind of love that Jesus walked in. It was righteous judgment. You say, but he went in the temple and he had a whip and he run them people out. Yeah, he dealt with that because of the cold heartedness of religion it was in there. It doesn't mean he was meek. He was the epitome of meekness. But he was bold and just and righteous. But he loved people. That's what we're supposed to do. We're the body of Christ. Is this helping anybody? How many of y'all ever read that, Be Ye Perfect? Is I am perfect? I read that. I meditated on that till my meditator fell out. <laughs> and I finally figured out. He's talking about perfect in love. I'm not perfect. I even miss it in love sometimes. I have to repent. I know y'all don't. <laughs> y'all don't ever miss. No. 
But I do sometimes. But I have to, I have to repent because I'm going I'm to repent because I'm going to tell you, I don't want the tormentors on me. I want to please God. I don't want to be somebody that just cast out devils. I don't want to act like no devil. You cannot get a demon out of somebody that will not forgive. If they've got into bitterness and they've got so far that that devil is inside of them, if they won't forgive, and believe me, we've had people that refuse to forgive people. They refuse to love people. They refuse to give to 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 forgive people. You you can't get the demon out of them. I, I'll tell you this again, and I was going to another scripture, but I'm not going to do it because... I've told this a lot of you, you know, who's heard it before, but Jeanette and I used to do deliverance up Channel 16. Jeanette set up all the appointments and everything for Joanne, and and we would go up there. And I, I tell you, you know, I learned something. Maybe this will help you. A lot of people, when they're under pressure, and that and 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 what they're doing is causing them problems, they'll call and make an appointment for deliverance. And 50% of the people that you make an appointment with won't show up. They don't show up. The devil either do something to mess with him or, or they, they say, well, I don't mind carrying this devil a little longer. And he didn't come. About 50% I'm going to come. About 25% out of that 50 would get help. You say they didn't all get help? No, they didn't all get help because they wouldn't do what you told them to do. What did you tell them to do? Biblical things to be free. We had this woman come in and she was she was a nervous wreck. She's just, she's just, I mean, you could see her. She's just a shaking. She, she was a precious lady. Her daughter brought her in. She said, I don't know what's wrong with her. So she just got this way, and we, and we we can't help her. And the doctors is giving her medicine, and and she's just her nerves is just shot. And so I, you know, I know what was going to, you know, Jeanette and I was, we know, we we, we just depend on the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say we we depend on the Holy Ghost to help people. Cause I can't help people. You can't help people with your mind. You you can't you know. You can ask them questions and find out what's going on, but most of them won't tell you the truth. That's got that's already got to the place where they demonize. They will not talk to you and tell you the truth. They'll walk. They'll go around and around and around the, the building, and they won't. <laughs> they'll talk about everything, but they won't tell the truth because they don't want to own up that their problem. A lot of it is lies in their own decisions and what they've done. So people will just not be truthful to you. And you're depending on the Holy Ghost. Well, this woman got in there, and immediately when she sat down, the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. He said, this woman is in unforgiveness and bitterness. He said she got a new pastor, and she had been teaching the Sunday school class for years. Now, the Lord told me all this stuff so quick. He said, he said she's taught it for years and said the pastor came in and took her off and put somebody else on it. And she's upset and she won't forgive him. And she's just, you know, she's just like this. I mean, she's on medication and everything. And so I said, you know, if you know you hear from the Holy Ghost, you can be bold. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not sure you heard from him, you'll say, well, let me ask you this. <laughs> but it wasn't that way with her. Jeanette, remember, I said, listen, I know what's wrong with you. I said, you got a new pastor come in at your church and he took you off your Sunday school class that you've been on for years and you won't forgive him and you've let bitterness come in and the tormentors has come and got on you. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not true. That didn't happen. I said, yes, it is. Tell me the truth. She said, no, 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 you, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. That ain't true. I said, tell me the truth, woman. She said, well, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Started crying. We said, are you ready to forgive that man? Yes. 
she got delivered just like that. I mean, the tormentors, we didn't have to rebuke her, didn't have to wipe stuff off her mouth, didn't have to do nothing. The immediately when she said she forgave him, those tormentors left her. She calmed down. Her daughter took her home. She's as calm as she could be like she used to be. It's important that we don't open the door for a devil. We got to love. And what will love do? It will bring you to forgiveness. Yeah, but they don't deserve it. No, but you didn't either. (laughs) Right? How many of us in here deserve the Lord to forgive us? None of us. None of us. But he did. He loves us. He's for us. He's not against us. When he tells us to do something, there's a reason for it. When he tells us not to do something, there's a reason for it. Amen. Praise God. We're so happy that internet listeners are with us tonight. And I hope, you know, if there's somebody you need to forgive, or maybe you can help somebody else with this message. Maybe you could have done a better job teaching it than I have. I don't know. Wherever you're at. But if you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. God will give you the grace to do it. And we love you so much, and thank you for listening. Uh, You know, talk to Jesus. There's one mediator between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. Just talk to him about it. And he'll help you. He'll give you the grace to do it. Amen. Thank you for listening. We love you. We'll throw you a kiss because we love you. Amen. Amen.